Have you ever seen a beautiful stone wall out in the middle of nowhere and it's just been standing there for 200 years? And have you wondered why it's lasted so long? Well, stick around because I'm gonna show you how they did it and how you can do it too. Now, to be honest, I don't often come across stone columns in historic architecture. When I do, it is mostly associated with agricultural or, as in this case, industrial use. What do we do for a foundation? Well, foundations for stonework are actually very simple. All right, I'm gonna say this right now. If you're building with stone, you don't need to worry too much about frost. Stone is incredibly heavy. If you have a frost that can topple three tons of stone, Half of your local population probably just froze to death and you've got more serious things to worry about. I will generally dig down through the topsoil and cut a few inches into the subsoil. And depending on the size of the column or the wall, I'll go anywhere from six inches down to two feet. With stonework, it's more important to make sure the weight is distributed over a fairly wide area. I build my foundations using stone and sometimes mortar. I don't trust concrete, I don't like concrete, I don't use concrete. When I put a stone in the ground, I know it's gonna be there for a couple of hundred years. And I can't say the same for concrete. My foundations are always wider than the column just to distribute the weight out a little more. I will then build up with stone to within a couple of inches of the surface. and We are ready to go and build this column. All right. The first course is really important. I start out by setting the corners and then I fill in any gaps. Columns can be built using two different methods. You can build like I am here with all the stones laid more or less flat, one on top of another. Now, as long as you make sure you don't have any running joints, you should be fine. Building this way has some pretty serious advantages. It can be built very strong with very little skill. You don't need much skill to build like this. There are some disadvantages. This method takes a really long time. Each course that you go up is only going to give you maybe three or four inches max. So it's, it's going to take a long time. If you're building something taller than about three or four feet, You'll definitely want to stick around and see this next method I'm going to show you. Now, another disadvantage in using this method is it takes a lot of really nice corners. And these can be surprisingly difficult to find sometimes. If you're not very skilled at cutting stone with a hammer and chisel to get a good square corner, you definitely want to stick around and consider this next method. All right. When you're out in the real world, you see stone corners like this all the time. I mean, they look great, but there are practical reasons for building a column like this. A stone corner can be built very quickly if you stand the stones up on their edge. Now, this is all well and good, but if you don't follow a few rules, this could end in disaster. You must make sure everything's tied together, inside and out. I started by establishing my corners. I check the square and I fill in the gaps between the corners. And okay, this gives me my first course. Now for a square, if you don't have a, you know, a two foot square, you can always just use your level and a straight board and just use that as kind of a rudimentary square. I do it all the time. I want to say this right now. There are some people who think you should put the heavy stone at the bottom put all of the heavy ones at the bottom and use smaller stone as you go up. I don't do this for two reasons. First, stone walls and columns should be held together primarily by gravity. So if I put some of the heavier stone in the top, that helps lock everything into place down below. Anything underneath a heavy stone is not going to move. End of story. Secondly, the bigger stone has a greater visual impact when it's higher up in the wall. When it's down on the ground, I mean, nobody sees it, but if you have them staggered through the work, it, it looks impressive. It really does. 
once you've got the first course down, the second course should overlap. By this I mean the corners have to alternate and run off in different directions in each course. You lay one cornerstone, it stretches down one face of the wall. The next cornerstone on top of that stretches down the, the other side. And you just alternate it. And this ties it all together. It's surprisingly strong. If you don't do this, your column probably won't be standing. If you're using this method, make sure you have a hammer and chisel ready to go. When you set a corner on top of another corner, you need to make sure that the stone either stands perfectly flat and level or leans in just a bit. Chip away any stone that interferes with this. And obviously, check your level every time you lay a new cornerstone. Now I'm going to show you how the inside of the wall should be put together. This is very important for solid stone construction. Everything needs to tie together. I filled in between these two corners. I wasn't happy with the space and I changed it up. Once I built it up where I needed it, I set the corner. I wasn't happy with the actual corner, so I marked it, cut it off with a chisel, and put it back in place. A good tight fit with a decent edge on it. On the bottom, I have a space to fill. I find a stone that fits it perfectly and it goes into the wall a little bit. So that's what I want. So I slide it in, I tap it into place. It's tight, but it can be better. Let's take a look inside now. Remember this stone? It sits well, but it's still a little bit loose. The goal is to strategically put weight on this stone to make it where it will never move. I build up inside the column. These stones should be relatively flat, but they don't have to be perfect. They just need to overlap everything underneath them. That's not too difficult. I've built up the inside of the column with relatively flat stones over, overlapping each layer. Now I put a small flat stone on top of this one that's coming in from the face. And the next flat stone I lay will actually push down on this and it'll lock that stone into place forever. So with that out of the way, I now put on the fourth corner and fill in behind. Over on this side, against this corner, I'm not happy with this space. I don't have many stones that I see that will fill this void, so I kind of leave it there and I come back and fill it. Eventually, I find the perfect stone for this space. That's basically all stone masonry is, finding the right stone for the right space. For this example, this is the biggest stone I have. I don't have any others this size, so I'm only putting this on there as kind of an example. I take it, I set it on this corner. It's a heavy son of a gun, but it locks everything into place. And, and oddly enough, it sets perfectly level. I, that kind of shocked me. That doesn't often happen. Usually, you have to do a little bit of chipping or rearranging to make it happen, but in this case, that stone just naturally fell into place. I check it with a level, perfect. A bit of advice, if you're building a column using this method, just make sure you've got corner stones that are close to the same size. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to use thinner stones to build up corners so you can overlap the corner stone. This isn't gonna make your column fall, but as far as visual effect, it doesn't look nice. I use this thin stone to do just that. It brings it up to a good level surface with the other corner. And I mean, it ties in nicely, but it's still irritating. All right, let's discuss mortar just for a second. Even though we're gonna discuss mortar in part three in more detail, I'm just gonna mention a couple of things here. You can build a stone column without mortar, without any trouble. I wouldn't recommend it though. The mortar does help make things a bit more solid. And for a, for a stone column at the end of your driveway, you want that extra little bit of stability. There are some advantages to using mortar. For me, it tends to save a lot of time. While I still need to make sure the stone will stay in place as if I'm not using mortar, 
having mortar joints on the face does make it easier. Like right here on this corner, if this was a dry stack wall, I could not get away with a stone this deep. But with mortar, I can actually, I can make really nice mortar joints all around this stone, and it would be a perfect fit. Now, I love doing stone masonry. It's probably my, my special for that guy. And so if you, if you live within a reasonable distance of Baltimore or Philadelphia, and you are interested in having, having some stone work done or anything else in the line of historic restoration, look for my contact information in the description below. Make sure you stick around for more awesome content coming up. Thank you for watching.